All right, guys, welcome to another lesson for uh, Algebra 1, Lesson 118, Solving Problems Involving Combinations. So today we're going to do uh, permutations and combinations and showing you what the difference is. And because you've done permutations before, it shouldn't take that long. It only has two examples that we'll go over, and that will be it. And then after today, two more lessons, and we're finito, we're done. So let's actually get into it. Okay, so if we remember the formula, NPR equals N factorial, N minus R factorial, N means the number of possible choices, R is the amount uh, that really matter, so the order of how many of them matter, um, like for example, finishing first, second, and third in a race or something like that, in which uh, if you're competing, obviously it matters that the three, third, three places could be... Um, any people, I don't know. Let's call them Johnny, Louie, and Kenny. And if Johnny's first, then Kenny second, and Louie's third, it's not the same thing as Kenny being first, Louie being second, and Johnny being third. They all change, and that is what we call permutations, meaning the different combinations in which they could finish in an order. So that's what they're asking. The first, they say there's a uh, test with four essay questions, A, B, C, D, and each student has to choose three. So how many overall uh, permutations could there be? So how many choices do we have? We have four, right? Four questions, but we must only choose three. So my formula would be like this. Four P three equals four factorial over uh, four minus three factorial, right? Four factorial over four minus three factorial. So we understand that we can do this in the calculator. I don't know if I, I think I showed you, right? Uh, where it was in the calculator, sorry. <laughs> Hit my calculator, wait, my calculator, right? So I know four factorial is going to be four times three times two, which is 24 times one is, I don't even know why I took out my calculator for this one, but four P three is going to be 24 over four minus three is one, one factorial is one. So my permutations here are 24 different combinations in which students could choose how to answer their essay. Now, um, hopefully everybody understands this, because then we're going to move to the other part, and we're going to go to the book. I'm going to show you what they mean in the book, and then we're going to go back into uh, what are combinations and why combinations are easier than permutations. And then we do example two, and we're done with this lesson. Awesome. Let's go. So in here, it asks, okay, so how many combinations of the three questions are possible, right? How many combinations of the three questions are possible? So what they're saying is, let's see uh, how many different ways you can answer the test. Uh, but you have to understand something. Combinations, it's, it's, very, it's like pizza toppings, right? If you choose pepperoni, sausage, and bacon, is, is the same thing as if you chose bacon, pepperoni, and sausage. Or... Uh, pepperoni, bacon, and sausage, or sausage, uh, pepperoni, bacon, or whatever as you want to do is the same thing. It doesn't really matter. And so that's very important because that's the difference between a permutation and a combination. It, a pizza is not a race. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, yeah, the pepperoni won, so it goes first. No, it doesn't matter. The pepperoni, pepperoni could go first, it could go last, but it would still have pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. So it's the same thing that they're saying here. What types of com how many types of combinations are there? Because there are 24 permutations, but there are how many combinations? Well, you see here, it says ABC is the same thing as ACB, CAB, CBA, BCA, and BAC. So all of these are the same thing as ABC, and that's why there's only four combinations. Yes, you could just list them all out and see which letters are unique, but that's kind of a waste, and that's why we actually have a formula for combinations. So let's actually go over the formula. Okay, so in this one, we have here the formula for combination, and so it's very similar to the one for permutation. The only thing that changes really is in the denominator, we have the R factorial that is multiplied by the N minus R factorial, which is what we've been doing before anyway. So in here we have the first example in example 2a, and it says, 
we can only choose two side dishes out of six choices. So how many different combinations can I have? And this is actually something that we use a lot more, like combinations of dishes, like when you go to, um, I don't know, I sometimes I think it's like um, Fridays or uh, Olive Garden or Ruby Tuesdays or something like that, where they have like choose and match or something like that. Even in Panera, like when they have choose too, and they have all the soups and they have all the sandwiches and they have all the salads, and then you can choose two of those, and then they would charge you a little bit less because it's uh, a cup and half a sandwich or a cup and a, uh, of soup and a small portion or half a salad or something like that. That's what we're talking about here. And this is what is more important. It's not like it's a race and then the soup goes first than the salad. No, it's just the same plate. It's the same thing. So it's the same thing here. They have six choices of, of uh, different and uh, appetizers, but you can only choose two so that they charge you less. And so what we need to do is uh, do our good old formula for combination. So out of the six that we have, we can only get two. So that means six factorial over two factorial parentheses six minus four Factorial. So six factorial, two, mi two factorial, six minus four factorial. Let me see because I think there's a glare over there. Oh, the glare monster hits again. And I've been trying, I have bags and I have all these types of things. So, but I think you can see it. Yeah, it's good enough. So then we're going to have six C2 is going to be the same thing as six factorial. So 24 times five is 120. <coughs> No, no, what, what am I saying? 34 times 5 is the same thing as 12 times 5 times 2. 12 times 5 is 60 times 2 is 120. Yeah, it's 120. Pfft. I'm great here. Uh, 120 times 6. 360. Here would be just 2. And in here it would be 2. All of it factorial. Uh, 2 factorial and 2 factorial is 2 times 2, which is 4. We have 90 combinations? That makes no sense. It's only 15. 6 minus 2 is not 2, is 4. That's why. And I did make a mistake here. It's 720. Uh, because 24 times 5... One twenty. But one twenty times six is not thirty six, it's seven hundred and twenty, seventy two. Oh my goodness. You see, I'm a little bit tired. So two and four is twenty four, so it's seven twenty and two times twenty four. That would be two times twenty four is forty eight. Anyway, the combinations end up being fifteen combinations. So for those of you who are interested, if you have six choices and you can only choose two, there's actually 15 possible combinations in which order doesn't matter, but there will be 15 different combinations because that's what the map tells us. And that's why combinations are not as easy as you guys think. So let's move on to the second part of this example. All right, in the last example, we have 16 types of fruit, but the customers can only choose 12. So what it says is that a company who delivers fruit to its customers, has 16 different types of fruit they offer, but the customers can only choose 12. So what you have to do is, and by the, by the way, I need a uh, calculator for this one. It's not like I know what one times two times three times four, I mean, I can do it up to six, but 720 times seven, that's where I start to, uh, uh, you guys start to get crazy and then I have to multiply that by 8 by 9 by 10 by 11 by 12 by 13 by 14 by 15 by 16 that's a lot so uh, yeah I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna use my calculator so it says 16 C 12 this is just a very good uh, way to keep track of which is N and which is R N is before the C and R is after the C the same thing when we do permutations N is before the P R is after the P. So then we're going to have 16 factorial over 12 factorial 
and 16 minus 4 fact 12 factorial, which is 4 factorial, which is 48, uh, 24, I mean. Is it 24? Yes, it is 24. So it's 24. And 12 factorial is... <laughs> Just found it. Yeah, let's just do it the long way, because I already know how to do it anyway, here. Wow. It's a big number. It's, uh, should have put the 24 over here. This is a huge number. Four, seven, nine, zero, zero, one, six, zero, zero. So it's 600. Uh, it's four hundred seventy nine million one thousand six hundred. Yeesh. It's a lot. Wish I had that much money. Uh, and then sixteen. Uh, let's just put sixteen factorial. I'm going to show you something really quickly in the calculator so that you guys don't get bogged down like I did right now. Sumi to calculator. So then we go uh, to math. Beautiful button right there. And it gets the math and fractions as well. But then we're going to move three times so until it hits probability. In probability, look at that. Two and three. Two is, um, what is it called? Permutation. Three is a combination. Look at that. When you press it in the newer calculators, you have to or you are able to put the numbers there. So I'm going to put 16 before the C and 12 after the C. Look at that. It would look something like this. Then you press enter. There are 1,820 different combinations. And that's how you do it. So, yeah, that's what I was telling you about a calculator. It's really important. This has been it for lesson 118. Two more lessons to go. Praise the Lord Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night and good luck.